Yo, what's up guys, Complies here. So today's video is going to be my first of multiple videos for my movement guide. Now I'm gonna be splitting these up from beginner to advanced instead of putting them all in one video because I feel like that'd be way too much information to take in. And unless you're an advanced player, you won't really be able to comprehend or take advantage of what I'm saying or trying to show. So that's why I'm gonna split them up. Now today's video is going to be a beginner guide. I'm gonna be going over a few things that I see a lot of new players or inexperienced players not doing or taking advantage of. So hopefully I can help some people out with that. But before I start this video i gotta plug my socials real quick now the link to everything is in the description below twitter instagram tiktok discord twitch so if you guys want to check that out i'd really appreciate it but most importantly don't forget to follow my twitch so you can see me play some apex live stop by say hi hello whatever you want to do and also if you guys do enjoy this video remember to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn that notification bell on but yeah guys that's it for this now we can get into the video all right guys so the first tip is something you probably won't expect at first it won't sound like it relates too much to movement but i promise you it does and that is going to be to stop running with your guns out 24 7. now i know what you guys are thinking like complies it's a shooter game shouldn't i be running with my guns out well yeah sure most of the time but there is actually so much downtime in apex even when you're in a fight to where you don't need to be running around with your guns up now with holstering it's going to allow you to move from point a to point b much more quickly now a ton of high level players and a lot of the good movement players you see them holster multiple times in a fight and they do this because they know there is no immediate danger and it allows them to get to where they're trying to go just that extra bit faster now does it look a lot cooler with the kunai spinning around and flipping yes now even if you don't have an heirloom you guys still need to be doing this now it might take a while at first to learn when you should holster and when you shouldn't and a good way to find this out is to watch like i said before a lot of the high level movement players and maybe even me too you know i'm trying to get up there as well i've been working on my movement a lot now i'm nowhere near as good as those guys but i think you guys could still learn a thing or two from me now that's going to be it for the first tip that was a very small one very minuscule but it's something that a lot of players do not do and i need to see you guys doing it more because you guys look like complete bots running with your long bows out now i'm obviously just joking around but now we're going to go on to the second tip which is actually actually very useful and that is going to be scroll wheel jumping now i know a lot of you probably already have scroll wheel jump and have been using it for a while but if you don't you are going to definitely need to bind that right now so i'm going to show you guys how to do that we're going to go into our settings menu now this is something that you can't do on controller so i'm sorry if you're in controller it's time to move on put the xbox controller in the closet and get yourself a nice mouse and keyboard now we're going to go down to our movement keys and we're going to go to jump you want to leave your key one on spacebar or whatever your main jump key is and key two is where we're going to change it so all you have to do is click it scroll your wheel down and it is now bound now this opens up so many different things that you can do you can b hop you can b hop heel you can zip line jump and i'm going to be showing you guys how to do all of that right now now the first thing that we're going to be doing with our new scroll wheel bind is learning how to wall jump and this is what a wall jump looks like right here it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but at first it is a little bit difficult to get used to. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is crouch slide into a wall, let go of all your keys, and then scroll your wheel down. Now real quick, I'm going to show you guys again. You're going to crouch slide, let go of everything, and then jump as soon as you hit the wall. One more time, just for good measure, to show you guys what it looks like. Just like that. Now a lot of people do wall jumps just to style on people or disrespect the enemy, but there actually is some practical uses for it. And I know Lyric covered this in his video, but one good thing to do is when someone is around a corner and they don't have line of sight of you, a wall jump can be very useful. So let's just say someone's standing right here. They're gonna be expecting you to walk around the corner just like this. You know, easy target, nothing special. I'm just peeking a corner. That's what they're expecting. But when you hit them with something like this, they're not gonna know what to do. This is gonna be how they react from their perspective. They're watching this corner right here and all of a sudden you come flying through here it's going to catch them off guard so let's make sure we're practicing that and like i said before it is best to use when the enemy does not have line of sight with you like this now the second thing we're going to be going over is b hopping now b hopping is pretty simple but at first it is very hard to get used to so i recommend coming into the range and practicing this for a while it may take a few days to fully get down maybe even more or maybe less if you have a really big brain like me so all you have to do to b hop is crouch slide jump and then spam our scroll wheel every time we hit the ground and then every three jumps or so you want to change direction and i do this by holding a and d so right now i'm doing three jumps a and then three jumps d three jumps a three jumps d now obviously it's not hard capped at three that's just a pretty good general idea of how often you want to be switching you could even get away with four or five or you don't have to switch directions at all that's just what i feel helps me and also don't forget to move your mouse slightly in the direction that you're moving so say i'm holding d and moving right move your mouse a little bit right or if you're holding a and moving left move your mouse just a tiny bit left you don't have to move it a ton Otherwise, you'll just kind of mess yourself up a little bit like that. Now, real quick, I'm going to be going over the inputs with you guys one more time. So all you have to do is crouch slide, jump, hold crouch, and then every time you hit the ground, you need to spam your scroll wheel. 
And I don't even think you have to change directions necessarily, but if you want to keep your momentum going, it is a lot easier than just going in a straight line. And this is going to lead us into our next thing, which is B-Hop Healing. Now, we all know that B-Hop Healing was nerfed back in the day. It was very strong back then, and you can move very fast, and you can still do it now. It's just a little bit slower, but it is more practical and a lot more useful than just walking in a straight line, slow walking and healing. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Now, it's going to be the same exact inputs that we were doing for B-Hopping, but before we start our crouch slide, we're going to want to hit our heal. Just like this. Now with B-Hop healing, it is important that we change our directions with every few jumps. Otherwise, it'll look a little bit something like this. See how I slowed down at the end there and lost momentum? That's what happens when you're not holding A and D and going to the left and right while you're B-Hopping. But with normal B-Hopping, obviously you don't have to do that. We already went over that. But when you be hop heal, you 100% do need to change directions every few jumps or hold one direction and make a big circle, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. So one more time, I'm going to be going through the inputs. So what we're going to do is we press our heal button, we crouch slide, jump, Remember to hold crouch the entire time, and then every time that we hit the ground, we need to spam scroll wheel, and also make sure that we're holding A or D and looking to the right or left, and it'll look a little bit something like this. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, we'll be moving on to the next thing, which is gonna be zip line jumping. Now, I know a lot of people that watch me also watch Fade as well, and he is probably the king of zip lines. So if you guys need educational zip line content, I definitely recommend watching Fade. He's very fun to watch, keeps it interesting. And like I said, guys, you could even watch me too. I'm starting to get up there as well. Obviously not as good, but we're getting there. So in order to perform a zip jump, all we have to do, we have to interact with it and then press our score wheel quickly after. Now there's regular zipline boosts, which don't really put you up too much. It's just a regular zipline jump and it looks something like this. But there's also a thing called the super jump, which allows you to boost just a little bit higher. And this is what that looks like. Now, obviously you can see why that's useful. It'll make you a super hard target. It'll also allow you to get high grounds on certain buildings. And in order to perform the super zip jump, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I think the easiest and most consistent one is to stand completely still, don't press anything and then do your normal zip jump, and that should propel you even higher than the regular zip jump. Or another thing you can do is just to time it perfectly, and you know, you can be walking forward, and that'll look a little something like this. You can do both, but I think it's a little easier and a little more consistent to do it while you're standing still. And I'll show you guys one more time. This is what a super jump looks like. And this is what a regular zip jump looks like. All right guys, so now on to our next topic, which is gonna be crouch slides. This is also one thing I see a lot of new players not doing as they like to run with their guns out forever and not do anything with movement. They just, they literally do this across the entire map right here. It's taking everything in my soul right now to not slide jump. Now I'm sure you guys can see right off the bat why this is bad. Well, not necessarily bad, but it's not effective. It's not the most optimal way to be playing. You need to memorize the cooldowns on your crouch slide and be using it pretty much non-stop throughout the entire game. No matter where you are, no matter where you're going, even if you're just looting and there's no one there, you guys need to be crouch sliding because it allows you to traverse the map much more faster and much more efficiently than you are if you're just running in a straight line with your guns out. Now you guys can figure out the timing for yourself. How I like to do it is I will do a crouch slide and real quick, I'll demonstrate for you. So I'll crouch slide, one, two, three crouch slide one two three crouch slide one two three now obviously that's just how i do it the way ace you said he does it is that he crouch slides he listens for three footsteps and then crouch slides again now it's going to be up to you guys to develop whatever technique you want to use i personally just think the one two three is the easiest way to do it now obviously guys don't want to count too fast or this will happen i'll show you real quick so crouch slide one two three dead slide so yeah you need to wait that extra little second take your time with it crouch slide one two three crouch slide now i'm going to be going over a few other crouch slide techs that you can use now i also forgot to mention i don't play with toggle crouch but i do think that hold crouch would make this a little bit easier so if you guys are on toggle crouch i recommend trying out hold crouch and seeing how that works out for you obviously if you're doing just fine how you are now then don't change but if you're struggling a little bit maybe try hold crouch and see if that helps you now one thing we can do with crouch slides is that we can actually start a slide at the end of our jump and it will look a little something like this you don't have to be on the ground to start it. And what this can do is make you really unpredictable in fights. So let's say I'm in the middle of a reload fighting this guy and I'm crouch sliding. He's not gonna be expecting that fast movement. It's gonna throw him off guard a little bit and it's gonna look a little something like this. So let's say I need to get that reload off. In his mind, you're still gonna be right here. You know, just jumping in the air, nothing special. But then you whip this out 
you do a little slide on him, he's going to be lost. Unless he's on controller, then it's going to track for him. Nothing you can do about that. GG's. He's just better. But seriously, guys, start doing that in fights when you're taking a 1v1, like a 50-50 fight. And that's going to help you a lot right there. Now, the last thing for crouch slides that I can talk about is called edge sliding. Now, a lot of people might know this, but climbing this, you can instantly start your momentum for a crouch slide. And it'll look a little something like this. Once you take that first step, you have the okay to crouch slide. You don't want to do it too soon or this will happen right here absolutely nothing you're just a sitting duck an easy target so you want to wait for that first step and then you'll be okay to go real quick i'm going to show you guys again so i come up take that first step and then i can crouch slide immediately this can also be very good for catching enemies off guard now real quick i'll show you guys how it could be useful now let's say just for practice purposes this guy is a real enemy and he's looking at me if he knows i'm here he's going to be expecting me to just hold this rock and peek like this but if i'm edge sliding and flying out like that that's going to catch him off guard for sure. Now, the last trick that I have for improving your movement is to raise your FOV. Now, the reason that I recommend this is because playing on a higher FOV is going to make it look like you're moving faster, even though you're actually not. But it'll make your movement feel way more smooth and fluid. It'll make it feel more clean, which in return will allow you to do more stuff and have more confidence. At least that's how it works with me. And real quick, I'll show you guys the difference between 110 FOV and 90 FOV. Now, I'm going to put them side by side. So here we go. I'll show you guys the difference real quick. Now this is more of a pure confidence thing. I also think it's just better to play on high FOV because you get more info on the screen. Now, at least in a BR, a higher FOV is gonna be more efficient because there's many more things to keep track of. There's a lot you have to do. And it's also just, like I said before, it's gonna make your movement feel so much cleaner because it's gonna make it look like you're moving faster. Now, the lowest I'd recommend going is 104. Obviously I'd recommend 110, but I know it's not for everybody. But if you're playing a pretty low FOV, like 104 or below, I'd recommend bumping that up to at least 104 and trying that out. Now, 104 is still on the pretty low side to be honest with you so even if you guys want to bump that up a little bit more it's going to make your movement feel a lot better and a lot more clean but yeah try it out for yourself if you don't like it feel free to go back to your lower fov this is just what i recommend I, it's helped me a lot all right now that's going to wrap it up for this first installment of my movement series there will probably be about four or five videos in total like i said i'm going to start from beginner and then end up in advanced but anyways guys that does it for today's video if you did enjoy it remember to leave a like comment and subscribe hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss the up and coming movement guys be sure to follow my Twitch in the description below where I stream just about every day. You could learn a thing or two about movement and aim for me. I'm obviously not the best, but I'm definitely above average, you know. Links to all my other social medias are in the description below as well. But yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you guys. But that's going to be it for me. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.